And I can see that uh, Kieran is uh, almost ready there. I, I give you a short introduction here. Uh, Kieran Mundy is currently a director at Transition Bristol and previously a successful business entrepreneur in the telecoms and property sectors. He trained and worked as a research scientist in soil ecology and was a founding director of uh, One World Wildlife, which supports conservation, campaigning, education and research projects. Uh, Karen's combination of interests led him to study economics with a focus on the role of money and banking in determining the type of economy we live in. He wants his current work to support the development of fair, diverse, sustainable economy through more widespread involvement and local ownership. Um, so let's uh, give a, a warm applause to Kieran. So I hope uh, you heard uh, the clapping of at least 130 people here in, in Tartu. Uh, we are very pleased to have you here with us in, in Bits and Bytes uh, from Bristol. Uh, and we're really keen on, on listening uh, uh, what games you play there with your own currency in Bristol and other interesting transition initiatives. So the screen is yours. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for the warm welcome and I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. Um, yeah, and it's a pleasure to um, and a privilege to be invited to speak, of course. Um, it sounds like a, you have a fascinating list of topics to discuss and I hope I can continue to keep people interested with what we're doing here in Bristol. Um, it was a, a good intro for me, so I won't say any more about myself. Um, I think what I'd like to start with is if we, um, we've done um, a, a short film, it's about three or four minutes, that explains um, the, the work behind this the scheme, or the, the rationale rather, the motivations if you like, and the reasons why you might do a local currency scheme in Bristol. Um, before we show that, I'll just uh, mention that it did come in a much wider context of there being um, a very active transition Bristol group that worked on a whole range of projects Probably they number in their hundreds now across Bristol. We've done everything from peak oil analysis for the local authority. We've helped start and support and network lots of different growing groups, as in organic growing groups, food groups around the city. Um, we've started a food policy council. We've run a, a whole raft of different events around Bristol. Um, and that's a big group of us, really, who've been working collectively since 2007 um, and on the back of a lot of that activity the, the Bristol Pound, the local currency scheme emerged and um, that was, um, all of that is grassroots movement, it's people doing things in community and out of that emerged a grassroots group that started the Bristol Pound. So I'd just like to show you a short um, video about the Bristol Pound itself and we'll focus more for this talk on that today. So I don't know if you're able to do that your end rather than me doing screen sharing. I think it's better if you do it direct from a browser. Is that possible? Can you do that? Can you start the film? Yes, we can do that. Yeah, okay, you just start the film now and we'll talk. It's just a few minutes. Bristol's a fantastic place to live. I love it here. And it's the people that make it feel so special. They have an independence of spirit that makes it quite unique. You can see it in the communities and in the businesses across the city. They're making things happen. Although it's not all plain sailing, like everywhere, Bristol is affected by global forces. The big banks have brought us austerity and the spread of very large companies brings inequality and often low paid repetitive work. But in true Bristol fashion, I don't think we should put up with this. Banking and money should work to support people, not exploit them. And that's why the Bristol Pound was born. It's a not-for-profit scheme run in partnership with the Bristol Credit Union. Every Bristol Pound is backed by a pound sterling. 
and the Bristol Credit Union provide financial <coughs> services to all the people in the community, regardless of income. It's a way of using money that builds wealth for everyone, not just the lucky few. And the simple reason for that is that Bristol Pounds stick to Bristol. Here's how. At the moment, money that comes into Bristol doesn't usually hang around for long. When we buy goods from a large international business, let's say a chain chemist, most of the money quickly leaves Bristol. Just a tiny slice stays behind as wages, for example. Nearly any profits this company makes will go into offshore tax havens, big executive pay deals and distant shareholders. Often no or very little tax has been paid on these riches, so these companies hardly contribute to the roads and services they rely on to prosper. Compare this to what happens when we buy something with Bristol Pounds. The money stays and flows around Bristol between people and businesses, creating connections, opportunities and jobs. <coughs> to understand this, think of Bristol like a big bucket. The Bristol Pound helps keep the bucket in good repair. The money circulates within it, and the more that comes in, the more we have. When someone gets paid wages or a business makes a sale, it fills the bucket. With normal pounds, the bucket is full of holes. These are made by bigger chain companies who want to take money out of Bristol. So most normal pounds leak straight out almost as soon as they arrive. Even if we spend it at local shops, the money still very quickly leaves Bristol. Spending Bristol pounds fills up the bucket and plugs the holes. The money sticks to Bristol every time it's spent, again and again. And already you can get almost anything you need. A business can pay its staff, pay its suppliers, or pay its business rates with them. The benefit of using the Bristol Pound isn't just a theory, it can affect our life every day. For every Bristol Pound spent, small and medium businesses create more jobs than large businesses. After all, if you had the choice, where would you rather work? An Amazon warehouse or a local bookshop? And the Bristol Pound really is for everyone. We're working especially hard in parts of the city where people don't normally have access to locally grown fresh foods. And the emergence of more small businesses can also help reduce inequality. Small or medium business owners don't usually have three, four or five hundred times the salary of the lowest paid person in their firm. But this isn't just about Bristol. Similar schemes can happen in any city or region anywhere in the world. The Bristol Pound is part of an international movement to reclaim money. And that's why dozens of groups all over the world are working together to develop similar schemes. So we can do things differently. And right here in Bristol, we've already started. And the more people who get involved and use Bristol Pounds, the stronger it becomes. Together, we can reclaim money for Bristol. So if you're an individual or a business, sign up and start using Bristol Pounds. That was uh, most intriguing. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. I would, I would only uh, ask that, uh, what have you achieved now uh, over these yeah. uh, few years? So um, we launched it towards the end of 2012. So we're coming up for our fourth birthday. We have a birthday celebrations at the weekend. Um, you're welcome to cycle over from Estonia and join us in the middle of Bristol if you want to join the party. Um, since we've launched, um, it's probably worth going over a few of the basic figures and some of the key strategic achievements of, of what we've managed to do, some of which are clear in the film. Um, so forgive me if I'm repeating some of the basic facts. Um, now, we knew that it was important to operate at a level of diversity and scale that would make it feel like money. If you don't have we, we considered that if it didn't operate close enough to how normal money feels, then people wouldn't use it at scale. So <clears throat> when we started, it was very much a, a values-based community group who wanted to do something. That created a really strong team that were really believed in the project. 
and we had very wide participation through an, uh, an arts competition to create the to create the paper so that people felt a sense of ownership about it and that engaged hundreds of people um, if thousands of people in fact across the city who took part in helping design the currency so since then since we've launched um, we've probably we have something around 2,000 account holders and when I say account holders what we have is both digital as you've seen in the film both digital and paper currency um, and it's crucial I think to have both the paper makes it feel like money the digital means that it can actually act like money because that's what happens with most money these days it happens digitally um, we've got about 2,000 account holders who can run their digital online payments they can do text payments as you've seen etc we've created roughly about two two to two and a half million pounds worth so far um, in terms of scale in a city like Bristol that's pretty small in terms of the overall economy um, so um, we have some very big manufacturing parts to Bristol's economy where they make um, uh, airplanes you know huge jet planes and they make weapons for the armaments industry and overall this the size of the Bristol economy including all that kind of stuff is something like 12 or 13 billion um, so you know making a couple of million Bristol pounds is, is small in comparison but it does have a noticeable effect for the people who use it and the communities that have, where they've used it a lot and where businesses have joined um, they can feel the difference so we generate probably an, about £150,000 worth of revenue each quarter for the businesses that are active within the digital aspect. Um, and for the paper, we don't really know how much revenue is generated because that can come in and out of a business without us having any record of it. But roughly speaking, from a digital point of view, um, we've created about £2 million. That operates to give the businesses that are active in the scheme about £150,000 worth um, of revenue over each quarter. So it it's exists and it's noticeable and people are very aware of it across the city. Um, we've, we've, um, almost everybody in Bristol, I would imagine, knows that there is a Bristol pound, if, even if they don't use it. Um, as I say, there's about 2,000 people roughly who've got all the, who have open accounts and um, and the, the deposits um, that they hold circulate, we think, maybe three plus times a year. Um, so some of the important strategic gains that we've focused on to make that happen are to make sure that you can pay some basic things. So the channels to using it, like paying your local taxes, was really important for us. So that was a very important strategic approach that we took from the start. We've also got mo nearly all the public transport across the city you can use it, the trains and buses, etc. There are hundreds of cafes and bars that use it all across the city. And the business services like legal services and accounting, cleaners and builders, that's growing. That's been harder to develop and that's taken more investment from us um, to help us achieve it. Um, to get from the scale where we are, I think it's important for, to say that that scale isn't where we want to end up. We have ambitions to go from creating a couple of million um, pounds worth over three or four years to creating a step change. So we go up from two million maybe to creating 10 or 20 million in a similar time frame. Now, the way we want to do that is, um, is, a, a, is slightly different because at the moment, everything is swapped voluntarily Every Bristol pound that is in existence comes into existence by being swapped one to one um, with a with British pound sterling, and people and businesses can swap that back. That's a slow pr process. So what we've decided to do is look at issuing credit at zero interest to businesses as a way of increasing the amount of money in the local economy. So if you like, it's a bit like quantitative easing on a, a local scale. And we've had a lot of interest and support from the European Commission for doing that and helping us develop that technology. That's gone really well and we're really excited about that. There's a project called um, DigiPay for Growth, which is 
funded a lot of the development of that work and we work very closely with our partners in the Netherlands, an organisation called um, Social Trade Organisation, who are very similarly motivated to, to, around creating a different kind of economy, um, one which isn't dominated by um, large national or multinational companies. So together, working with our technology partners, what we want to do next is to step it up significantly and start issuing credit to businesses as a way of vastly increasing the amount of local currency that you've got. And it also meets a very clear commercial need of those businesses um, to have access to finance, something which the big banks in recent history have retreated from because they, have, they struggle to assess the risks around local economies. And that's something that we have much more intelligence on and so are able to do this with um, greater confidence and manage our risks around issuing credit as well. I think that sort of takes us up to today and um, where, where we hope to go next. I don't know how much longer we've got for time and I was, um, I was going to show you a short video which I've sent through about what we're going to do next in terms of the issuing credit which explains it a bit more and after that we move to questions. Do we have time to show this video? It's about three minutes long and then, um, then we can move on to questions after that. Is that, is mm. that okay? Maybe we have to cut uh, shorter this video a bit uh, okay. because we really would like to take some questions in case we have. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, maybe we'll, we'll, leave the, we'll leave the second video. If we're running out of time, I think I'm very happy to move straight to questions if, um, if people have them. Yeah, so I, I open the floor. If uh, there's anyone uh, uh, willing to... Uh, I uh, pose a question here uh, for Kieran about uh, the Bristol Bound or other transition initiatives which he hasn't really talked yet about, but uh, uh, you, you might have some questions. Yes. Hi, Henry. My question is that uh, I have uh, noticed lots of other similar local schemes in the UK. So how do you compare yours with, uh, with let's say, I don't know, Brixton Pound or Dotness one. Yeah, um, so we we collaborate quite closely with a lot of the scheme, other schemes around Bristol. We share a lot of technology, and um, we provide to some of the emerging schemes. We're providing technology services to them to enable them to leapfrog a lot of the development that we went through, so they can get to the stage we're at now much more quickly at a much lower cost. Um, Totnes and Brixton both were launched before us, and we learned a lot from their launch. Um, they're, they're both much smaller areas um, for a local currency to operate in, so they do they operate very differently. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that they don't have the number of transactions, etc., as you'd expect, because Brixton Pound, for example, is a neighbourhood within London, a very active and vibrant place it is, and they've done an amazing job and we've learned a lot from them in terms of testing some of the technology and the way that they engage with their community is really imaginative and creative. I think um, both, and I would say the same for Totnes as well, what's really important to think about is not just say the number of Bristol Pounds, the number of local currency going around the local economy, but it's the social impact. People start to think differently about themselves when they have a local currency. It gives people a sense of agency around economics, which people don't often have. And uh, we, in the studies that we've done of our own users, and I think this would apply to other schemes, is that that's almost more powerful, is if you change how people think about themselves and their role in the economy, that's a, a really important thing to achieve. Uh, but I'd say but the Bristol Pound is probably the has the most financial transactions going on of all the schemes in, in um, the UK at the moment. Uh, how do you finance your own activities? Uh, if I recall right, then uh, you had a staff of uh, uh, four or five people? Yeah, so we, um, in terms of running the scheme as it is now, that's run by probably um, four people, but we have a much larger team of uh, as well that support the project that's um, funded to develop the, the credit creation system that I described at the end there. So we benefit from the fact that we are 
looking to support SMEs directly with a financial service that's more commercial. So the two coming together um, has, has really helped us a lot. Um, I would say that initially we got some small grant funding, we're very dependent on the voluntary effort and we still are dependent on a lot of volunteers come and go at the Bristol Pound and, they, and we make sure that they have a really, really good experience. Um, you know, people give a lot of their time for nothing to the scheme. It's still very much, we hold on to the idea that this is a community scheme based on very strong values that people have of, around community and uh, a greener environment, a greener economy, and doing things for each other and helping each other out. It's a very strong sense of building the world we want want to see together in community in Bristol, which the Bristol Pound very much depends on. But we, have, but we have received quite a lot of grant funding for developing the technology side of what we do. Um, and, and maybe the last uh, question, if uh, there won't be any, any more than, um, you probably have looked into uh, the reasonable size of a community uh, to adopt uh, their own currency. Um, so, uh, for example, we are in, in Tartu, uh, which has uh, roughly 100,000 inhabitants. I suppose that in order to really circulate the currency, have the businesses and, and people engaged, you should have a uh, like wide variety of services available in that community. So, uh, could you give any clues on that? Yeah, I think that this is the kind of chicken and egg situation you have with local currencies is that um, they're trying to address the fact that economies lack diversity and money leaks out of the, of the local economy because we require services that can only be provided by people outside of our economy. This is a problem and it impoverishes people on a massive scale. It's a really clear issue and we want to try and help address that. But if you don't have enough diversity to start with, it's very difficult to get going, that's true. I would say, though, across a, a, a town the size of Tartu, it very much depends on the structure of an economy. You can have a, a, a town of that size that has quite a diverse set of services, uh, business and domestic um, services, and also other kind of... Um, organizations, community-based and local government that could operate a local currency at, at the appropriate scale. But without knowing the diversity of um, available goods and services that are there within Tartu, uh, it, it would, you need to do that analysis first to see who could be the potential participants of it and start to analyze some of the supply chains of the potential businesses and talk to the businesses. Um, about their willingness and interest in taking part in a potential scheme. And we have a final question uh, from the audience as well. Do you hear Just, me? Uh, Hello. I was thinking that to keep money in a country or city, you need to produce uh, more also. So you don't need to import so much. So do you think that uh, the pound of Bristol makes Bristol to pro produce more and the import, le import less? Or Sorry, uh, I, I didn't quite catch that question. I, uh, I was uh, thinking that to keep money inside a country or a city, you need to produce, so you don't need to yeah. import. And you think that ma pound of Bristol makes Bristol to produce more and uh, import less, well, or? Okay, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's very early days to know what the impact is in terms of the overall productivity of the city. Um, and it's not strictly bound by the city limits. We, talk, we take a regional approach, the city region, if you like. But yes, that is an important outcome that we seek at the end. Um, I think the point is that um, the way that money works is it creates demand. 
You don't get this in standard economics textbooks, but money does help create demand. If people know that there is a money supply ready to pay for certain goods and services, they will then start to consider buying those, uh, creating something to meet that potential revenue. Uh, so it's in it in of itself, and I think a lot of more heterodox economists have written quite well on this. Creating a local money supply does create demand, and that's the the beginning of when you have um, new products and services that can be produced. I think it's worth remembering that there's a lot of things that, whilst of course there are a lot of things that we depend on the global economy for, there is a huge range of um, activities, you know, creativity and um, other services, which we're big on the creative industry in, in Bristol, which don't depend on the global economy. They, create, they depend on the hard work, the time and creativity of the people in that place. So without a doubt, you can start to produce things that people want. They don't have to be physical goods, and ser physical goods. they can be services, for example. And people, I think, in a more sustainable world in the future, will be spending more of our wealth on other people's time rather than on goods that depend on an extractive economy, take digging things out of the ground or using fossil fuels. Um, okay. Uh, it seems that we uh, have to uh, move on now with uh, with the next speaker. I really thank you for this. Uh, exciting insights into uh, transitioning Bristol and uh, let's give a big hand to Kieran.